Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Johan. Also and I'm known, Kim. Also known as 1853 from Life Lover. That's correct. And other projects. Mm -hmm. And we welcome you all to this uh, podcast of sorts. Yeah, this little <coughs> video series where we're talking about ourselves as artists, people, musicians, and of course... How we work together. Yeah, and about Life Lover. Uh, I've known him half my life and yeah. uh, most of the time it's been uh, focused on cre creative work. Mm -hmm. And yeah, welcome. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Goddamn. So, so yeah. Today we're going to talk about, or tonight, we're going to talk about uh, some of the works I've done for Life Lover. Or yeah, with uh, Life Lover. we have a nice list of questions from our fans that are following us here on uh, Facebook. And of course, it goes to some of you on Facebook too. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't had the time to check your comments. So that's something we're going to do um, for our next vi video. Uh, because we can do that tonight or tomorrow. But right now we're focusing on the YouTube comments. So that's what we're talking about this time. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we got some questions about um, the song Besat. Yeah. And <clears throat> the lyrics can be interpreted in very many ways. Mm -hmm. And for me it's about, well, um, for a long time of period I was in a very strange state of mind. So, so, so to say, you you are a witness, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, you you were uh, between things, both in life and medications, and uh, yeah, and what was yeah, really personal like, relationships and all all kind of that stuff uh, has th their own way to uh, affect you as a person, especially when you're under twenty years old. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And well, I wrote <laughs> the funny thing because is, I was the only one in life level over twenty. When we started. Yeah. The rest of you were like 18, 19. Uh, this is... Uh, the way I got me into Life Lover was by... S I met Jonas at a party or pre-party. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, his um, girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. You knew, you knew his girlfriend. Yeah, at the time he was yeah. together with a girl called Marta. Who I, Marta! Uh, very, very uh, an amazing person. Uh, mm, but, yeah, she's but, cool. But anyway... Um, or was, um, uh, we started talking about... Uh, well, creative works, mm -hmm. mainly his music, because uh, I've no, I knew about him before I met him. Yeah. Uh, as most of us did, I think. Uh, yeah, Dim him was starting to emerge a bit from the underground, and people exactly. in Stockholm were starting to get aware of a new band from the underground. That was because, like rising. Yeah, exactly, because Dim him was new, while Ondskapt was about 10 years old at that moment, and... Uh, that was the only local equivalent really because sure dark funeral was much older but that's very different yeah. and bands like offermood or marduk they are from uh, north and not stockholm so when it came to the local scene it was very special because there's not a lot of devil worshiping or satanic or spiritual bands around really especially not uh, during around 2004 or 5 Exactly. And now there is, but uh, yeah, 16 years ago there really wasn't. Yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah. I, I, uh, we start, started to talk, but, uh, all of a sudden started to talk about my poetry because mm -hmm. Marta had told them about me writing poems. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you were, uh, the next day I sent him a few. Yeah. And the funny thing is that Besat was written a long time before, or not a long time, but. Um, uh, before Head and Sand on Pulver, but um, it was suitable for um, the Arctic album. Uh, you wrote this music for it. Yeah. And uh, that the text is really about uh, during a weird time of my life, I had this tendency to walk around the lake for a long, long time. And um, I was. So that's why it mentions these waters. Not only yeah. the water of possession. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also about alcohol, of course, because I drank a lot back mm -hmm. in those days. Um, and obsession. It's kind of. It, beca it yeah. becomes an obsession. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, water is, for me, somewhat of a symbol. Um, like a, a mirror towards something else. 
uh, it can, could be death if you're drowning yourself, and a mirror can be something that, uh, yeah, reflects. Um, anyhow, um, it's about transformation in many ways, uh, and I don't think most people see that part of the lyric, but um, that's what it means for me and not necessarily everyone else but um yeah everyone can interpret it the way it, the the way it, uh, they want um however it's up to you if you like it you like it and if you like the way you interpret it congratulations that's awesome and uh, how about uh, head and sound uh, that's more of a um, during that said state of weird state of mind or period of weird, uh, of being in a, in a strange state of mind, mm -hmm. um, Hell and Sand is very much about um, not necessarily possession, but uh, about um, being um, in a compulsive state of mind yeah. and being led by something you don't really have control over. Um, in many ways, I'm religious, and we'll get back to that topic later. Yeah. And, and I uh, think spiritual is a better term than religious. I'd say so, yeah. Um, and how it's very much about uh, being uh, sort of in a pre-state of said transformation that Besat is about. Um, when you're forced to follow a certain way, it's just a calling. You can't really control it. Yeah. Um, however, it was, um, of course, very frustrating and um, hard to transform. But I'm glad it, it can be. Yeah. Uh, but it's worth it. Uh, no pain, no gain, so mm -hmm. to say. Um, it's a it's a saying for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. And um, of course, it was hard and um, for. A certain uh, period of time, as um, yeah, as the song ends or the lyrics end, um, for a long time I thought the only way out was suicide, but then I kind of woken up, or de woken up, as in a later lyric called uh, Ned Baknan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, yeah, I think uh, that, that can also be connected to like. Uh, it can be uh, worth connecting that uh, because these two songs have uh, that in common a bit not just water but also the like the yearning for something beyond and also during that time uh, of our lives uh, you actually tried to kill yourself yeah and uh, how uh, and how is that something that you feel uh, did that affect you as an artist or how, how you write music or how you think about things like philosophically or spiritually uh, i wouldn't say that i'm immortal but i've tried to kill myself and not as a cry of help um, like actually trying to kill myself and failed three times and um I kind of got to. It's the, more like an act of contempt against life rather than a serious attempt of ending it. I'd say so. I, like I, you I you really used to put your phone, foot down and say, I don't like this, I'm going to do something different. <laughs> sort of. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, um, it's kind of amazing that I actually survived those attempts, but um, I'm glad I did. Because. Me too. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Um, thanks. <laughs> No, but um, I'm glad I did because um, I got to the um, point when I realized that I'm here for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, I shouldn't die yet. Uh, and um, even though I know that many of you out there would see uh, would like to see me dead, uh, <laughs> I, I'm here until I'm done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if age will kill me, if um, bad habits will kill me, or... Uh, if I'll take my own life, but until I'm done, I'll be here yeah. because I have things left to do. 
Yeah, and I think maybe that was one of the things that you're maybe struggling with back then. Yeah, I Just, uh, Right now, we both feel we have a strong goal and we have a purpose. We have our path and we have worked really hard for many years to create those paths. Yeah. But back then, we didn't really have any paths. We were fucking nomads, just searching for meaning in everything. And that's why we... Fumbling course, in the dark. Sort yeah, of. and that's why we became obsessed with things like drugs and alcohol and the devil and just anything that is the general opposition of the main uh, society of course because anyone anyone can work at the cash register at the supermarket but uh, if you want something else you you have to run towards it because if you're not there first someone else is going to get there before you yeah and that can, of course, get applied to many things, but especially when it comes to like alternate paths and um, yeah, trying to be creative, but also uh, finding a way through life that is uh, with uh, less compromises. Like it's it's harder making compromises, and I think we all struggle with making compromises in our lives and in our careers, or depending on like what. Uh, what what we choose or not choose for our career, our workplace, our uh, friends, our partners, and so on. Yeah, um, everything is about compromising because yeah. if you don't compromise, you can't really exist in a normal world. Yeah. But uh, both me and Kim have in periods more or less, or to different extents in different periods of our lives, show some. Uh, well, more of an underground path. Mm -hmm. um, for me... Yeah, and a sacrifice. We made sacrifices exactly. for, for our creativity's sake. Exactly. That, that it doesn't benefit us as persons. It doesn't benefit our career. Like, we have, we have been okay with losing a lot yeah. of friendships and money. Yeah. Because for us... For what uh, we believe in. Uh, yeah, for our beliefs and our, our uh, creativity has been so much more important. However, of course... The... Okay, it was very different like uh, 15 years ago when we started Life Lover and your your jobs and your education were very different from what we're doing now. Uh, like, uh, how, how did that... Do you, ha do you have memories of how it affected you? Uh, back to, my education? Like, or... Yeah, or just... Uh, I know that uh, Fix has his education in stupid journalism and uh, <laughs> and uh, H was working like at a casino and then as always the the forever postman that is uh, but uh, you <laughs> have uh, you have been changing your life a bit more than they because uh, back then of course you were living in Stockholm but then you moved down to the south of Sweden uh, but uh, and now I'm in Gothenburg of all places yeah uh, well um. Like, I, how has I, I wor work affected you as an artist, especially con if we start in connection with, to life? Level. If we start with education, um, I don't see myself as an intellectual, really. Mm. But um, uh, right after high, high school, I started uh, studying theor uh, theoretical philosophy, which helped me a lot with uh, the work with life lover and creativity mm. in general. Uh, then I actually studied stupid journalism for a <laughs> while, uh, but uh, at a different uh, a different school mm -hmm. than the fix mm -hmm. and uh, I it, I don't really like it so then I worked at a warehouse and then I worked at um, this um, dial service mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> it helped me a lot because I made some um, at the time very nice friendships um, but um, anyhow then I moved down to um, Scania um, in to Malmö to study in Lund that's nearby yeah and um, I studied um, it's about uh, half hour 45 minutes from yeah something like that How, uh, less, less than an hour from our about 30 minutes depending on what bus you take yeah, or, or car for that sake for people that are more civilized than us yeah <laughs> <laughs> then it's even faster yeah uh, and I have to start yeah, but less than an hour at least yeah so, something like that so for most people in the rest of the world they know that Lund and Malmö 
It's more or less Because most people know of Malmö, but not Lund. But yeah. M- Lund is pretty close. Malmö, murder, murder capital of Sweden. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, I started, studied informatics for about uh, three years. And I actually got my degree. Um, uh, few, few years later. Um, however, I didn't really prioritize school. Mm-hmm. But uh, actually tried to make money. Yeah. Um, and support... Thanks. Um, but um, yeah, for those you don't know, informatics is uh, kind of like programming and shit like that. System development. Um, yeah, languages that isn't uh, spoken, it's more yeah, sort of. written language. Yeah, yeah. like uh, coding and yeah. uh, system development. Um, and then I uh, moved to Gothenburg and uh, worked for like tech support and shit like that. And now I work as an IT consultant. Um, service desk sort of job and um, I do it for the m- provide myself uh, provide m- to obtain the f- funds I need to work with music and art more or less uh, yeah that's uh, usually a good motivator and the reason to do most things and I enjoy it it's yeah. a nice job um, I, I like my colleagues and stuff like that and I had a lot of shitty jobs. <clears throat> Warehouse was awesome. Uh, dial service was alright. I've had some side gigs as well, but um, I've done it to provide, to <laughs> pay my rent and have food and um, yeah, to fund, uh, to buy instruments and um, things to work with art with and shit like that. Yeah. It's a necessary evil. Yeah, exactly. But also, it's uh, I think it's important for most people to know that we we wouldn't be the artists that we are without having these conflicts uh, and uh, compromises. compromises in life that is required from us to uh, evolve as persons. Because uh, if you're only surrounded by people that say yes to everything you do or say, or if you're alone... Uh, compared to being at a workplace, if you're if you can't uh, handle yourself around that kind of environment, that will uh, make you a inferior artist, I think. Because well, a- anyone can isolate themselves in a cabin in the woods and make music, but that doesn't guarantee that the music will be good. Because you you might be doing it for the wrong reasons. I think you have to. I think be... we we could do it, but. We've had 20 years of practice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we have forcefully submitted ourselves to the world. That's also something that most people don't do. Especially not misanthropes. I don't do it for fun. But sometimes I have to. Yeah, I, I'm not very fond of you, you humans. But yeah. um, I think that uh, living in your world... Um, <laughs> no, but being being exposed exposed to the real world is important because then you can be in your own world and see the con- uh, contrasts and the differences. And if you can combine those two, you can make something personal, uh, something that's unique and really you. Yeah. Hypothermia is a good example. Definitely. Uh, and uh, reach out. To the real world um, and um, when it comes to isolating yourself in the sake of art sure you can do that but um, I, I don't think that's for once healthy and uh, even less uh, a good way to create art because then you don't know what's happening around the world and then it's impossible for you to actually how to say make something that will be interesting for the rest of the world. Yeah, they won't feel the connection to it because they don't know how to associate to it. Exactly. Like it's important to be... Kind of, you uh, had to been there. Yeah, it's a, it's important to associate to stuff. Yeah, I people, think so. People um, uh, dream of uh, having uh, like connections. And uh, I think that's one of the things that has been important for a lot of our fan bases. That they feel the connection to us because we are so honest and open in our life and our work. Yeah, we um, really expose ourselves. Yeah. Uh, not only in life, lover, but from in my in for me, in like escapee, uh, 
everyone who actually read the lyrics know exactly who I am and yeah. how I lived. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's even more to uh, it, there's even things that you would have uh, in after sight would have preferred to actually not release because you, you feel that it's too much of yourself that you're sharing. Kind of, yeah. or maybe my old self. Mm -hmm. I, I'd uh, either not, maybe not, not necessarily not have it had it released, but ex at least changed, changed a lot. Yeah, uh, especially when it comes to lyrics. But because uh, yeah, we don't really edit ourselves a lot, we. Uh, we are all, Just go all for it. We're, uh, we're bad at self moderation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both me and Tim are quite impulsive mm -hmm. at times. <laughs> like la last night. <laughs> yeah, and uh, nah. m many days uh, that we have uh, met over the years, uh, we usually have days of clarity, but also days that are complete hazes. Yeah. But that's the charm of it but also the, the reason why we can have those days is because our trust in each other is complete and we uh, we are comfortable around each other to the extent that we are able to uh, let each other pass out without feeling that someone needs to take care of us we can we can be free enough to uh, leave our bodies and not fear to be dead or Um, betray, betrayed. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we know that we're we're we're, we're not, in good hands. Yeah, we're not in a race to stab each other in the back, <laughs> and whoever does it first wins. <laughs> like yeah, we've never had that kind of friendship, uh, fortunately. I, I'm and, very glad. Uh, that, uh, I think that's one of yeah. the big problems in the metal and black metal uh, communities overall. That most countries have. And especially even cities in other countries have these uh, poisonous social hierarchies. And I think that's also why how, how Life Lover got created and started, but also what sustained it and made it so powerful that we were uh, the, the anti all of that. We, we were the cure and the poison to all of those that uh, insisted on uh, putting themselves on some self-imposed throne yeah. of fucking nothingness. Like, you want nothingness? Well, let us show you. We, we can take you there and we will take you beyond it. And you'll hate it and yeah. you will be glad you, you're not But your friends will love it and they will hate you for not loving it. So, <laughs> haha, that's what you get. You should have been on our side from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. But they weren't. And now they're fucking philanthropo f philanthropes for nothing. Instead of the satanic death worshipping misanthropes they were claiming to be 20 years ago. Many people claim to be things they aren't though. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you're 15 years old. Like, yeah. What do you really know about life for yourself? I'm not better than anyone else, though. <laughs> I think we're a bit better. <laughs> now we are. Yeah, now we're we are. we're improving. <laughs> uh, we have evolved. Fortunately, we have leveled up. Since. Uh, yeah, we sure we sure have. Yeah, I don't have a good instrument to make the sounds of leveling up. But I'm just. <laughs> we needed one of the tongue drums. That's a good level, level, level up. Sound. Awesome instrument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, that's a good little uh, intro and foundation to what we're talking about in this night. And uh, as always. Those, these days, rather. But anyway, um, maybe that's all for now. Yeah, I think for the, for the moment we have made a good foundation of talking about uh, general stuff in the past and uh, Life Lover and some of your songs. And of course, we're going to go more in depth of uh, some of the lyrics you wrote and also my memories of them or the recordings of them. Yeah. But uh, that feels a bit more focused to have in a separate video. So those of you who, who feel that you we wasted 20 minutes of your time by listening to this... Uh, there will be more. There will be more. Uh, and that will be more focused about uh, lyrics, songs, 
artwork, things like that. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, just yeah. An introduction. Yeah, exactly, an introduction, and um, I hope that you enjoyed it, and uh, we thank you for listening and joining us, and uh, yeah. Till next time. Yeah, till next time. Take care.